The Wheel of Time, Season 2, Episode 6 Although the previous episode was called Damani, this is the one in which they dive into what it means for Egwene to be captured. Right from the start, we can see how hard her punishment can be, but more on that later. Rand confronts Lanfear within Teleron Riyadh, and though the actress didn't quite fit as Selene, I have to say that she looks much better as Lanfear. However, it is true that they chose to dress her in black, while she is so widely known to favor white clothing that Semirag, her rival Forsaken, chooses to dress in black just to be seen as distant to Lanfear as possible. This is not a major mistake, and it won't ruin the plot, but it bothers me a little because it was really easy to avoid. I had stated before how Leandrin having a son doesn't really fit within the Wheel of Time lore, but given that they opened that line, they had to close it at some point. Here, through Lanfear, it comes to an end, leaving Leandrin free to focus on her Black Aja plotline. The Shonchon are well acquainted with Ogier. In fact, I want to see the Ogier Death Watch God as soon as possible, but for now, here we get an example of tree singing, which I think was a great addition to demonstrate what the Ogier can do and their connection to nature. Besides, it shows how strict the Shontan are with their subordinates. Which takes me to the next point. Rena is ruthless as all Suldam should be. It was important to explain how helpless a woman becomes once they clasp an atom around her neck and they showed it to perfection here, caring to express how the Shonchan see Damani as no more than animals. To that end, it was also a nice detail to show the Damani in the next cell reciting her orders as a mantra, to manifest the idea that, after their training, they begin to lose their minds, and with it, some of their humanity. This Teleron Riyadh scene may be a little slow-paced, but it serves to show how Lanfear tries to manipulate Rand, and how her goals don't align exactly with those of the other Forsaken. Plus, somehow, Rand had to know where and how Egwene was, so as to give him a cause to make his way down to form. A great detail was to show what the characters write in paper to present the script used in the Third Age, separating it from our own writing system to convey the idea that this is indeed a distant time from us. That said, I think that Moraine's time in Kyrian is about to overextend. Don't get me wrong, I believe it was interesting to explore a little bit of House Damodred, but none of this is at the core of the plot and, let's be honest, giving screen time to Anvir bickering with her sister takes time away from more important scenes. Here, Loghain takes his first steps into teaching the Dragon Reborn how to channel. As Rand learns through a different path on the books, I wonder, will Loghain only teach him the basic principles, or will he become his main mentor? Will Asmodian appear later to do his part in this matter? We'll have to wait. To book readers, it looks a little weird to see Min and Matt traveling together, but have in mind that, due to the widely known problems with Matt's previous actor, his role had to suffer a special adaptation. Besides, this ends up serving as the conduit to give Matt some screen time, and mainly to get him back to Rand, and thus surely joining the main cast at form. All along this episode, the Soldam's treatment of Egwene is nothing short of brutal, as it should be. They held nothing back here to make it plain that the Shonchon are ruthless. It could be said that they dedicated a big chunk of this episode to Egwene's suffering, but this is a key moment for her, as it molds her steel determination later on, so I am glad they showed this in detail. Another thing that might look strange and confusing to book readers is the confrontation between Lan and Alana and her warders, who suspect the former to be a dark friend. Piled up upon Lan openly admitting that Moraine found the Dragon Reborn, 
All of this feels out of place, and not without reason, but it's meant to drive all of these characters to meet at a big gathering in Kyrian, where the Amarlins also headed. This could be a way to fuse all of these subplots together, making Lan meet Moraine again, and somehow mimic the encounter Swan has with Brand at Faldara in the books. We'll have to wait for the next episode, but I believe this could work to put many characters on the right track. For instance, Lan meeting Rand could mean that we will finally see them both practice in sword forms, which will be important for the season finale. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Lastly, the final sequence of the episode brings the typical fight scene, through which we can see again an Aes Sedai fighting in unison with her warder. Raima was given more importance here than in the books, and it is, I think, an interesting addendum since book readers know Raima later becomes utterly broken as Damani. Her fall combines nicely with the Gwen's breaking scene, and though it seems that she's finally subdued, this determined face we see as the last scene tells us that underneath she's forging the strong character that will define her later. If you like this content, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Feel free to join me next week for my analysis on episode 7. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.